What happened to you, sir? Had a stroke. I knew it. It affected that side of your body. And we, yes, sir. And it messed you up, didn't it? Yeah. The Lord also shows me some of your hearing was affected. Is that right? I'm going to start at the top and walk, work down. How many believe God can reverse this man? A new auditory nerve. Deafness in Jesus' name. I command you to come out of this ear and never come back. We reverse the stroke. Come out in Jesus' name. Open for the glory of God. I hear it. You're hearing. Faith Alive is on the air with evangelist Ted Shuttlesworth from New York City to Los Angeles, from Anchorage, Alaska to Honolulu, from British Columbia to the Maritimes, and in the great cities of the world, London, Rome, Moscow, and Manila. Brother Shuttlesworth touches millions of lives daily with his message of faith, proclaiming the saving and healing power of Jesus Christ. With over 40 years of dynamic preaching, he is bringing this life-changing gospel into your home. Join with Ted Shuttlesworth and let's believe God for your breakthrough today. And now, join us in York, Pennsylvania with the crowds that came to hear and be healed. Evangelist Ted Shuttlesworth. From New York City to Honolulu. From the Canadian border to the Rio Grande Valley. God's not through blessing America. I believe God's going to move. I call Pennsylvania as a part of the move of God. I call in Maryland as a part of the move of God. I believe God's in York tonight. Yeah, Lord. Say Jesus. Hallelujah. Now lift both your hands and thank him for souls. What he's doing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. I said soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Oh, yes. soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the king. soon and very soon, say, soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, soon and soon, we are going to see the king. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going. Soon and very soon, 
we are going to see the king. Well, welcome to the telecast again this week. I'm going to tell you something. This year has just been going by so very quickly already. And my name's Ted Shuttlesworth. We're getting so many new viewers. The other day they showed me the list of brand new people watching. We love you. And I trust you're being blessed by what you see. This program, I have one purpose, and that is to demonstrate and show God's power to our world. And the miracles that you see, these are real people receiving real miracles from a real God. And if you will, during the telecast, you see that special number come on the screen, uh, toll free here, U.S., Canada, overseas, a special number. Pick up your phone, wrap your faith around your greatest need, make the call, and we look forward to hearing from you today. Today's message, Dealing with the Devil, we're going to take you into a live service already in progress where God's Spirit is moving. And now, with today's message, Dealing with the Devil. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said, because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Now look at this. To preach deliverance to the captives. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can be free. Say it again. You can be free. The Lord has been dealing with me. We've got to get better at ministering to the oppressed. People that are suffering. Some of their suffering is caused by the devil himself. And the church needs to get back to helping people and ministering to them where they're at. I had an old preacher that I used to love. He said, don't expect people to come to your level of faith. He said, but learn to meet people where they're at. And the truth is, some may be at a higher level than I am. But it was good advice. Minister to the people right where they're at and what they're going through. Can you say amen? amen. The Bible says there's deliverance for the captive. And when that anointing came, there was a purpose to the anointing. The Bible says for this purpose was the Son of God manifested or sent that he might destroy the works of the devil. When you have a generation that doesn't even know what their identity is, their gender, we need deliverance. When you have a generation that believes it's all right to kill your baby 28 days after it's born, we need deliverance. When you have a generation that attacks the elderly on the streets of New York City and tries to kill them, we need deliverance. There are demon spirits that know their time is short, but thank God Jesus came to give us power over the devil and over all his works. Can you shout hallelujah? And no devil's going to take you out, but there is an anointing from heaven to set the captive free. I come to preach deliverance to the captive tonight. If you're being oppressed, if you're going through it, if you're dealing with depression, if the devil's trying to destroy you, call on the Lord right now. He will deliver you. There's an anointing to set the captive free. Clap your hands and shout hallelujah. <laughs> Ephesians, the sixth chapter. I want you to see this with me. Paul said in the sixth chapter, verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Moffat's translation says wicked spirits trying to rule over you and I. My wife and I were holding a meeting just a few years ago in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. When I was done, I saw a preacher's son, 
and his dad had used to travel with me all over the world. And I saw his wife was there. And I said to him, invite your wife back. We've got some refreshments. I'd like to meet her. And he went over to her, and she shook her head no. She didn't want to come back. And when she did, I saw a dark shape over her head. I could see it, and I'm rubbing my eyes and looking. And that dark shape went right down into her body and disappeared. And the Lord said to me, that woman is now demon-possessed. I didn't want to hear that. I went back. The preacher's son came back to talk to my wife and I. I said, will your wife come back? He said, she strangely doesn't want to be around you. I found out years ago, devils don't like to be around you folks because you have the power to set people free through Jesus Christ. Deliverance doesn't come from a preacher. Deliverance doesn't come from a denomination. But deliverance comes from the Lord God who made the heaven and the earth. Christ is on the inside of you and there is a delivering power at work under this tent right now. A few months later, the young man's father called me, the preacher that traveled with me. He said, Brother Shuttlesworth, I guess you've heard. I said, heard what? He said, my son's wife just left him, ran off with another man, and is pregnant by that man. I said, no, I didn't hear that. But I said, can I tell you something? I said, a few months ago when I was in Toronto, your son and at that time daughter-in-law came. Oh, yeah. I said, when they came to the meeting, I saw like a darkness, like a shape, go right down into her head and then disappear in her body. And I said, the Lord told me that your daughter-in-law had a demonic spirit. And I even told my wife, I said, it's a spirit of lust. Some of you are battling the devil and you think it's just your mind. But that's why I put this tent up. We're going to set people free from sin the attacks of the devil. You don't have to put up with the devil's mess is what I'm trying to tell you. That girl left that man. She never married and got with another man, got pregnant again. And the last I heard, she's on her fourth man and pregnant for another time. Families destroyed, at least five families I know of destroyed. That's what Satan's trying to do to your family. That's what he's trying to do to your life. That's what he'd like to do to come against you. But Jesus is your great champion. He's not going to let the devil steal your children. He's not going to let the devil destroy your grandchildren. I come to tell you that if Christ is for you, then I don't care who's against you. If God be for you, it makes no difference if every devil in hell and out of hell comes against you. God is the champion working on the inside of every believer. And when people get oppressed, they don't need just some kind of psychological counseling. They don't need some kind of drug to ease their pain. What you need is the gospel of Jesus Christ that sets the captive free. He came to preach deliverance to the captives. Can you shout yes? And Paul said to the Ephesians, these devils are rulers of darkness. And that's what I believe God burned up a strong man. I saw in the spirit. He wasn't going to let the devil take this nation out. Too many people are praying. Recently, some of our religious leaders, so-called, went to Davao, Switzerland to attend the World Economic Forum. And when they came back, they made a statement, we're going to set our denomination against these people who preach healing, prosperity, or in other words, tithing, giving, the blessing. And he was talking about Pentecostal folk. And I looked at him. I saw his picture. I read the statement. And I said to my wife, it's working. I've been telling people your giving can undo the great reset. 
And I said, now I got proof. He come back with his marching orders. Get the people to stop giving. You see, the devil like to steal your money. He'd like to cause you to be oppressed financially. He'd like to cause you to lose your job. He'd like for the food supply to be cut off. But what the devil didn't figure on is our Christ who stands high, but he comes down low. Hallelujah. He is a wonderful Jesus. Can you shout amen? And the rulers of the darkness of this world are not going to have their way, but the Bible says there is that kingdom of light. Hallelujah. Righteousness. I'm talking about Jesus. And when the devil paints the picture as bad as he can to your mind, you ought to lift up your hands and say, devil, you shot yourself in the foot. Everything you tell me is a lie and the opposite is true. I will be blessed. I will be healed. America shall be saved. Come on, shout hallelujah. And the nations of the world, God said in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh and you're going to see a move of the Holy Ghost. Come on, clap your hands and shout. On May 14, 1948, Israel was reborn as a nation. Then all hell broke loose. On June 5, 1967, Israel came under an attack. What does the future hold for this tiny nation that God calls the apple of his eye? Ezekiel prophesied, after many days, you will be visited. Ted Shuttlesworth's newest book answers the question, where are we on God's prophetic time clock? Will Russia eventually invade Israel? Is Islam a religion of peace? What was the vision of the destruction of America? For your free copy of this book, The Coming Invasion of Israel, call 1-888-323-2484 today. Go with us into a live service where miracles are taking place. Here's a nice lady. I, I don't think I know her. But I'm going to pray for her. You've lost some hearing. I have nerve deafness since birth. Since birth. I have 70% lost in one ear, 30% lost in the other ear. If it's quiet, I can hear what you're saying. 70% loss in one ear, 30% in the other. And this nerve deafness was since birth? Yeah, lack of oxygen. All right, I'm going to pray. That's all I need to know. Everybody lift your hand towards her. Keep playing something softly. I felt her faith. I asked Brother Johnson, I said, bring this lady next. Because her faith was jumping up to God. We know God heals men that brother just received. How's it sound over there? Better? Hey, Amen. We'll save you a front row seat. Now, you heard what she said. If there's no noise, I can hear some things. But how many know under this tent, we make a lot of noise. And has trouble distinguishing words even when they're singing. All right, lift your hands. We're going to pray. I got enough to know how to pray. Lord, she's had this since birth. One ear almost totally deaf. The other, about 30%. But Jesus, you can do anything but fail. I'm standing on your word tonight for her. Lovely lady, I command new eardrums to be formed in her head. New auditory nerves that she didn't get at birth. Give her perfect nerves. In Christ's name, thou foul deafness, in the mighty name of Jesus, the head of the church, I command you come. Oh, in Jesus' name, open for the glory of God. Clear, clear. What are you going to do when you can hear? Will you praise God? I praise God all the time. You do. What are you going to do when you can hear with music playing? Will you praise him then? I absolutely can. You will. And when you know you can hear and hold a conversation with music in the background and you're looking at all these wonderful people, are you going to shout amen? Amen. I don't know about you. I think you just got it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Play something for us. She said, thank you, Lord. Come on. The windows of hell. It don't take all night. And the blessings are falling tonight. Well, I got joy, joy, 
joy in my soul. Jesus made everything right. Come on, shout! I gave him my whole tattered garment. Well, Jesus gave me a robe of pure white. Well, I'm feasting on men I'm from heaven. That's why. That's why I'm happy tonight. Now I have to admit, I'm prejudiced because we got some wonderful folks from Atlanta helping us. And I looked over here and I saw a man with the Atlanta Falcons hat on. So you come up here next, because I got a whole row of people that drove up here from Atlanta. You a Falcons fan? Where were we at, Turner Field? When the guy that played for the Falcons came and gave his testimony, I can't remember his name, he was a running back. What was his name? Terrence Mathis. You remember Terrence Mathis? He come under my meeting. Preached. Had about 80 young men get saved. Now here's one of his men right here. Uh, tell us a little bit. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Will Jones. Will Jones. And you've lost some hearing? Yeah, my left is bad and my right's going bad. So now both of those ears are going bad. Now you're a young man. You can't mess around with this stuff as they say out on the street. I'm done with this stuff. I've been done. Now, I believe I preach from the Bible tonight. The Bible says when you preach the word, these signs shall follow them that believe. Everybody say signs, signs. Wonders. wonders, miracles. Yeah. Say it again. Signs, signs. Wonders. wonders, miracles. How many believe Jesus is bringing them back to the church? And I don't know these folks. But that man just got touched. That woman started talking and carrying a conversation. I just wanted her to see she got it. He gonna get it. Take my hand. Oh, Lord. One ear's already bad. The other's starting to go bad. That was what he said. But Jesus, we know you're powerful. I'm not praying for you to fix the ones he's got. I'm asking you out of the part department in heaven. Give him two new eardrums. Brand new auditory nerves, Jesus. Thou foul deafness. In the mighty name of Jesus, the head of the church. I command you to go and never come back. Come. Oh, in Jesus' name. Open for the glory of God. Clear. Clear. What happened? It's clear. It's just clear like that. Oh, hallelujah. What do you think? Oh, he said, I got it. Clear. Oh, yeah. Come on, shout. Say it. windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. Someone say the Lord did it. Joy, joy, Let's start bringing. I'm going to pray. My soul. Come on. Jesus made everything right. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior today, call the toll-free number and pray with one of our anointed partners and join these that are coming to Christ. Brother Shuttlesworth would like to give you this free copy of the booklet, There's Room at the Cross. Thank you for responding. We look forward to hearing from you now. I was just thinking of that song, My God is Real. Did you ever hear that? He's real in my soul. My God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. And that's why I come to you each and every week showing you these are real people, as I said earlier receiving real miracles from a real God. God has a miracle for you and your family. I'm very concerned. A lot of people, they're just not ready. Jesus is coming very soon, and they're not ready. That's why I'm offering this free book, The Coming Invasion of Israel, absolutely free so that you can share with your family and your friends how close we are to the soon coming of Jesus. And we've made this a digital download, so all you got to do is go to my website, and you see there the information on your screen, 
and download, as soon as we go off the air, download this and make sure that you share it with your friends so they can do the same because we're getting very, very close to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to pray for every one of you today. Some of you may have never known of the power of God till just now. The Bible says many uh, believed on his name, Jesus' name, when they saw the miracles which he did. Notice when I pray for the deaf or the blind, many times I'll say, in the name of Jesus, the head of the church, because Jesus is alive and he's raised from the dead, boom, the miracle happens. The deaf hear, the blind see, and the cripples start walking. These are evident proofs that he is alive. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every soul watching, wherever, whatever nation, wherever they're watching, I claim every soul for heaven and God. If you're not living for Jesus, pray this now. Say, dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I believe, Father, you raised Jesus from the dead for me. And right now, sin's power is broken. I am free. That's it, friend. And then again, if you will, let us know you prayed that prayer. You can go to my website, tedshuttlesworth.com forward slash prayer. Put your requests in. They'll bring them to me. I lay my hands on pray for you. I just have a few seconds left, and I, I always like to remind people, I can only do this. I can only take this gospel around the world, nation by nation, like it's coming to you because of friends and partners. Every week I'm on television, we have new friends that are tuning in for the first time. May I encourage you to partner with us, sow a financial seed. There's the information on your screen. Go today and say, Brother Shuttlesworth, keep it coming. And until next week, remember, God is very close to you. On May 14, 1948, Israel was reborn as a nation. Then all hell broke loose. On June 5, 1967, Israel came under an attack. What does the future hold for this tiny nation that God calls the apple of his eye? Ezekiel prophesied, after many days, you will be visited. Ted Shuttlesworth's newest book answers the question, where are we in God's prophetic time clock? Will Russia eventually invade Israel? Is Islam a religion of peace? What was the vision of the destruction of America? For your free copy of this book, The Coming Invasion of Israel, call 1-888-323-2484. Today. Thank you for tuning in to Faith Alive. We would like to hear from you. Visit us online at tedshuttlesworth.com. You can also write Ted Shuttlesworth, P.O. Box 7, Farmington, West Virginia, 26571, or call toll free 1 888 323 2484. That's toll free 1 888 323 2484.